Broadcasting live from somewhere in the Shadow Realm, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Here's your host, Doug Dimadoo. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Today, we're going to take a look at a Dr. Velian machine deck build that really involves the ancient gear archetype and my goodness this deck was really really good near the end of this season of ranked duels this one brought me all the way up to basically one card away from king of games uh, i was up in legend three won my one my four straight was going on my fifth one and boy i just had one one player top deck exactly the right counter that uh, that they needed to to get the win against me, and it was a really hard fought duel. But man, if if only things were in a little bit different, I'd be sitting at King of Games and uh, just just that close. But this deck is the one that got me just just about there. So this is a really good one. I recommend trying this one out. It does involve a little bit of control aspect to it, as you know, the basic uh, theme behind uh, ancient gear monsters is when they attack. Your opponent can't activate any spells or traps until after the battle phase. So, yeah, without further ado, let's just jump into some of the monsters. The first one is the big, beefy, ancient gear golem. This is a level 8 machine, 3,000 attack, 3,000 defense. It cannot be special summoned, and if this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing battle damage to your opponent. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. So this monster is just really good. If you level up uh, Dr. Velian up to... Um, uh, Dr. Villian Crowler up to um, level 35, you'll be able to get your second copy of Ancient Gear Golem. I don't necessarily know if I want the second copy in this deck. It would be very good, especially if you're running Middle Age Mechs, which is the one that, uh, which is the skill that I'm, I'm running. You start with Ancient Gear Castle on the field, but a lot of players right now are using Spell and Trap Removal to get rid of that card off the field, so you might want to run that second copy in your deck, as well as running the actual skill for Middle Age Mechs. But, uh, yeah, so I do run two copies of Surge and Electra. I'm kind of on the fence between two and three copies. This card is really good. You want to see this one early and often. But, I don't know. It's just because there's so much synergy with Middle Age mechs, I'd rather have an Ancient Gear Monster first off. But still having a Sergeant Electra really does a good job locking down your opponent's back row. So basically what it is is level 4 machine, 1600 attack, 1300 defense, where once per turn you can target one face down card in your opponent's spell and trap card zone, and while this card is face up on the field, its target or targets cannot be activated. So it's nice when you're able to get multiple copies of this card on the field at the same time, they kind of cross, um, you know, cross lock down the back row in case one gets destroyed, or even if you tribute summon using one. So yeah, this card is really, really good. You get this in the uh, Flame Tyrant box set, it's just just an all-around great card. Then you got Ancient Gear Knight. It's the super rare that you could get from farming Dr. Crowler. A uh, level 4 machine Gemini monster. 1800 attack, 500 defense. You know, it's treated as an old monster while faced up on the field. Then you can normal summon it again to activate the following effect. If this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. So, yeah, holy crap, this card is good, especially if you're able to get that Gemini effect activated. What I used to do when I first put together this type of deck, I would run Double Summon. I don't do that, do that anymore, but it is a good way to either get that one monster tribute or to activate the Gemini effect for Ancient Gear Knight. So, oh man, this card is good. And if you have your Ancient Gear Castle on the field, it's a 2100 attack monster. So having a 2100 beater on the field almost from the get-go is great. That's why I run three copies of this card. So, so far we got the one Golem, the two Sergeant Electro, and the three Ancient Gear Knight. Then, to round things out as far as Ancient Gear monsters are concerned, I run three copies of Ancient Gear Beast. Level 6 machine, 2000 attack, 2000 defense. It cannot be special summon, and if this card attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell or trap cards until the end of the damage step. Negate the effects of an opponent's monster destroyed by battle with this card, including in the graveyard. I love this card. I want to see this card at least by my second turn. Hopefully when my opponent has already summoned a monster so I could activate Ancient Gear Castle's effect to tribute this monster over that spell card. Because it doesn't matter if your opponent's running a Hain Hain or a, uh, a Maneater Bug or a DD Warrior. 
your ancient gear beast negates the effect, even from the graveyard. So things like Kid Moto Dragon, anything along those lines, once it gets to the graveyard, don't matter because its effects are negated. So this card is outstanding. And that's why I like to run three copies of it. I want to see this one in my hand early. And yeah, overall, just a great card. Then for more of a tech on my side, you could do this with any card uh, that you want. I just run the two copies of DD Warrior, the level 4 warrior, 1200 attack, 1000 defense, because it banishes opponent's monsters. Because some of them, they got these effects like if Boxer gets destroyed or certain monsters get destroyed. I like having DD Warrior in this deck just for the sake, uh, just for the fact that it does banish. And uh, I did run this deck before with Main Eater Bug. I may put one back in just because of all the Weevil burn decks that I'm seeing where they're using Jade Insect Whistle. So rather than getting a Parasite back into the top of my deck, I could just get my Man Eater Bug to the top of my deck. So that's another way too. So you just got to consider what you want to tech in there. But I do leave two slots open just for monster removal monsters, you know, using their effects. You could use something like a Hain Hain or something to send monsters back to your opponent's hand. But I do like the banishing effect for DD Warrior, which is why I run those two copies. It's been pretty clutch. Uh, in, in multiple situations, uh, especially against uh, Cyber Angels too, because, you know, they have that protection that keeps them from getting destroyed. When Dakini runs into a DD Warrior, it gets banished, and the uh, Cyber Angel Ritual doesn't get its chance to keep that Cyber Angel uh, Dakini alive. So, yeah, really, really good card. I do run the extra copy of Ancient Gear Castle, the continuous spell card. You already know what it does. When you have Middle Age Mechs as your skill you do start with one on the field i love having two on the field at the same time which is awesome because then that boosts your ancient gear knight up to a 2400 attack monster just from having those two cards on the field so now as we get into the spells and traps this is kind of where you get a little creative i've run multiple copies of enemy controller right now i only have it down to one because as the meta shifts and as we're getting monsters with powerful effects i decided to swap out two of my enemy controllers for two copies of Ultimate Providence. And this is a great card. It's actually saved my butt quite a few times, uh, one of which was against a Cyber Angel deck. Once Dakini was summoned and activated its effect, I activated my Ultimate Providence, discarded an Ancient Gear Golem from my hand to the graveyard, negated that effect, and destroyed Cyber Angel Dakini, and things worked out fantastic. And there are a lot of effect monsters. I've actually won a game, too, because I my mean, opponent activated a, a Sphere Karibo in their hand, negated that effect, sent it to the graveyard, and uh, yeah, ended up swinging for game where my opponent was trying to stall me out for at least another turn to try and win. So this card does come in handy. Uh, any type of, you know, and I do have a lot of traps in this deck as well, which is a pretty good thing seeing as the meta's kind of shifted into more trap-heavy decks. So if you keep a Metal Morph or a Rare Metal Morph or anything like that in your hand, you could also discard that to negate a powerful trap card on your opponent's side of the field. Like a Winslow of Etiqua or anything like that, or even a Mirror Wall that they want to act, uh, activate before the battle phase because they know that they can't activate any spell or trap cards as you're attacking. So, But I do run the two copies of Wall of, Wall of Disruption. Very good card because when, uh, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, all the attack position monsters your opponent can controls lose 800 attack for each monster they control so this card is really really good but as more and more players are shifting to ancient gear type monsters or utilizing cards uh, like anti-magic arrows you may want to switch back to mirror wall because you could activate that before the battle phase or before any of those monsters attack and uh, that's a good stall factor but yeah you're kind of locked out of all of disruption if your opponent does run ancient gears as well but then i run two copies of rare metal morph i like the 500 attack boost but it also is great in case my opponent's trying to snatch up one of my monsters with an enemy controller or anything along those lines or uh, quite a few times they've been trying to use a uh, soul exchange on some of my ancient gear monsters but activating rare metal morph it will stop that uh, stop that target from the spell card and destroy it and the thing comes in handy i'll do i do run the one copy of metal morph as well and i have used it on my opponent's monsters uh at certain points too uh like when my opponent was running that uh, amazon swordswoman and trying to get all those uh, uh you know just basically for me to take the battle damage I'll activate Metal Morph and, and really mitigate some of that damage. I actually want to duel that way, uh, utilizing Metal Morph on my opponent. But really, for the most part, you do want to use it to get your Ancient Gear Beast or your Ancient Gear Knight 
over some of your opponent's stronger monsters, and uh, Metal Morph is just the best way to do it. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as my rundown of monsters, spells, and traps. Uh, Again, this is keeping me steady at around Legend 2, Legend 3 right now. It's just a matter of finding that lucky streak, and it seems like every time I get on a good run, I'll kind of brick a few hands. That's the one thing with running uh, middle-aged mechs is that... The effect, you know, you really don't have much control over what cards you're getting in your hand. You're not running a restart and you're not running a, uh, a balance where you kind of have an idea of what kind of cards you're getting in your hand. So, yeah, overall, I mean, the deck is very, very good. You just got to have the right cards in the hand. And more often than not, with this setup, you do get a lot of the cards that you need. Uh, but, yeah. Ancient Gears are very powerful. I can see why they're a very high-tier deck right now. Uh, barring any kind of nerfs from Konami, you never know. They may overreact kind of the way that they did with Cyber Angels. But, uh, yeah, I kind of hope not because this one, there are ways, plenty of ways to defeat uh, th- to defeat this type of deck. Um, but at the same time, too, it is one of the better ones out there right now. So we'll, we'll see how everything goes. And, uh, yeah, this deck, you know, I definitely recommend trying it out if you're trying to make a good run for King of Games. Like I said, I was that close uh, this season just yeah seem, seems to happen and then Konami tends to rip rip your heart out by uh, giving your opponent just the right card at the right time without using destiny draw but still uh, that, that's still a really really good uh, really good run on at least on my part because I wasn't getting too competitive this season but I yeah, figured I'd give it a good shot because of the the KC Cup coming up and uh, yeah if you do make king of games before that then uh, you are qualified for the second round so give it your best shot uh, hopefully I'll be there but if not those of you who are going to be there, kick some butt. I'd like to see you guys do some work. So, uh, but anyway, that's it for today's episode. Uh, if you do want to reach out to me on Twitter, you can find me at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk, at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. It's all one word. And I'd love to hear from you. But anyway, that's it for today's episode. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>